We started in 2007 uh, with sort of a post-mortem on PlayStation 3, what worked and what hadn't worked. Uh, and um, by 2008, I know that seems like a long time ago, but by 2008 we were already in very heavy design work for PlayStation 4. Well, we wanted to make sure that the that PlayStation 4 was a, a powerful hardware, but we also wanted to make sure it was an accessible hardware, meaning that the game creators could focus on their vision for their titles and not get bogged down with technical details. And I think we've, we did succeed in making a, a title, uh, a console that is quite easy to develop the games for. And that's, that's reflected the launch lineup. I think we have the, the strongest launch lineup of any uh, PlayStation console with PlayStation 4. I can't call out the teams by name that were particularly helpful, but uh, they were the teams that they were they were that were the most outspoken. Uh, Adam Boys talks about tea and crumpets, and that's his term for when you're having a meeting and everybody's being oh so very polite. And those meetings are pretty much useless if you're trying to get feedback because you don't want to hear how happy people are that you're coming and visiting. You want their their criticisms of your work. You want to hear what it is you need to do to make the console more so suited for their needs. very excited that the hardware is uh, indeed uh, very accessible to the developers. Because it's got a familiar architecture, we're now seeing a whole bunch of indie titles coming over from the PC world, which uh, if it had been something much more complex to deal with, I don't think we'd be seeing. The origin of having both roles is uh, I had a conversation with Akira Sato, who was chairman of Sony Computer Entertainment at the time, about whether or not he should even continue making games. And his advice was a lot of my long-term value to the organization was because I was making games, and if at all possible, I should keep doing so. Well, certainly it was a lot easier to make NAC uh, than it would have been on other platforms. I think we saved about a year from our development as a result of doing it for PlayStation 4. As for what specifically is next gen about the title, the character is based on a 5,000 object physics simulation. I'd say that's probably the most PS4 focused feature in the game. So when we started making NAC, the idea was that the character would be an effect. We wanted to have something that would be truly international. And I'd noticed through working on Crash and Ratchet and Jack and Spyro that when a character is made, it tends to have that feeling of the country where it came from. And so by having Knack be something different, like the character you see built out of the parts, we could get around all of that and make a character that would seem familiar no matter what country it was in. We really had two targets with the game. Uh, one was core gamers looking for an old school challenge, people who had played and enjoyed Crash Bandicoot or uh, Sonic the Hedgehog back in the day. And those are brutally difficult games. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, uh, despite its two-button control scheme, was very, very difficult to finish. So we knew that on a hard difficulty setting, Knack needed to be a tough game to beat. The other audience we were going after was um, light or beginner players. I knew that there would be quality uh, core games at launch, Killzone and the like for that predominantly male core gamer, but I just wanted to make sure there was something for the rest of the family, sons, daughters, spouses and the like. As a gamer, I have a weakness for JRPGs. Uh, recently though, I've been going through the back catalog of the smaller titles. I was playing Limbo and Alternating that with big stuff. Right now, I'm about three hours into The Last of Us. I think one of the big phenomena we're going to see is the blurring between single player and multiplayer. We saw a lot of this at the, the Ubisoft press conference games where you'd be playing solo and then suddenly you'd be playing co op and then you'd go back to playing solo again. I think another thing we're going to see is living worlds. When we were touring the developers, a lot of them had the same vision for the future that because there's a hard drive, in PlayStation 4, they'll be able to update the game daily, weekly, monthly, which means every time you go back to play it, there'll be something new to experience, new missions, new places to explore, and the like.